This week in our series, Daring Faith, it's, we have the theme of daring to plant in faith. Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth endures, there will be seed time and harvest. There are laws of seed time and there are laws of harvest. And today we're specifically going to look at what are God's laws of the harvest, his laws of planting and harvesting, or as it used to be called, sowing and reaping. Because before farm machinery, people had to sow seed by hand. And it was called broadcasting. Because as you would have a sack, and as you would walk along, you would quite literally broadcast the seed. It's also where we actually get the term propaganda from. Propaganda as in propagate a seed. So, if you ignore the laws of sowing and reaping in your life, it's going to hurt. It will very likely harm you. If you use the laws wisely, you're going to be blessed. And you can apply these laws that I'm going to go through in every single area of your life. You can use the laws of sowing and reaping in your relationship. You can use it, you can use them when it comes to your health. If you take risks like smoking, drinking too much, taking illegal drugs or too many over the counter or prescription drugs, if you eat unhealthily, you can very easily reap serious illness. Learning how to plant wisely in your career or in any other aspect of your life and how to harvest wisely will benefit. The point is this, whatever you need more in your life, you need to plant. If you feel you need more appreciation, start appreciating others partly because it will actually help you to see how people appreciate you. If you feel you need more talent, start using what you've got. If you need more time, if you need more money, whatever it is, you need to plant so that you can harvest, that you can reap. So let's go through these thoughts. First one. Uh, have I missed it? Everything starts as a seed. Every idea starts as a, as a seed. Every dream starts as a seed. This church started as a seed. Your life started as a seed. Everything that's living on earth came from a seed. If it doesn't come from a seed, it's not living. Genesis 1, hopefully, yep. God says this, let the land have seed-bearing plants and trees that bear fruit with seed in it according to their varieties. But in the context of what we're talking about, a seed is anything valuable that I give away. When you give away praise, there's a value to it. When you give away good advice, there's a value to it. When you give away your time, there's a value. And obviously, money has a value. And also, when you give away your experience to help others, there's a value to it.
Words can also be seeds. Words can be seeds that you plant in people's minds. And they can grow and bear fruit. So, you need to choose your words wisely. There's people like myself and Martin and Jenny who do counselling know the damage done by the wrong words can devastate people for, for absolutely years. So, what type of seeds are you planting in your relationships? Is it trust or distrust? Is it kindness or bitterness and meanness? Are you planting seeds that will build up or are you planting seeds that tear down? Because you reap what you sow. Moving on. Nothing happens until the seed is planted. It must be given away. Jesus used this principle about himself. Unless a grain of wheat is, is buried in the ground, it cannot reproduce. But if it dies, it will produce much fruit. A farmer is not going to get anything if he just if he just keeps his seed in the in the storehouse. If you buy a packet of seeds from the supermarket, you're not going to get the vegetables or flowers or anything else unless you plant them. So it would be foolish because seeds are meant to be planted. Planting and sowing is an act of faith. It's, it's an act of faith because oops, I believe that something great is going to happen. Something's going to come from it. I'm not going to keep it in my bag. I'm going to give it away and I believe it's going to produce fruit. Let's see where we are. Um, Planting seeds is risky because you can't tell what's happening. If you had seeds in your garden, you're not going to go and put, dig them up every day just to see what's happening. Um, it's the same not just with physical seeds that we plant, but with every other type of seed. Um, and, God, and Jesus applies this to the kingdom. The kingdom, verse up there, the kingdom of God is like someone who plants seed in the ground. Night and day, whether the person is asleep or awake, the seed still grows. But the person does not know how it grows. Can't see anything until it sprouts. And then you may not even recognise what the plant is from the seed anyway, until it gets a bit higher. Third law is when you have a need, you should plant. A father looking out at his barren field doesn't moan, doesn't pray, he doesn't even pray, he just goes out and he starts planting. There are times when you should not pray. Now that sounds contradictory, but It's no use praying of the farmer praying, oh God, make my crops grow, when he hasn't actually planted the crops. Uh, 
If, yeah, if you don't plant, you're not going to get anything. The Bible says it. Ecclesiastes 11.6 Do your planting in the morning and in the evening. You never know, what, know whether it will all grow well, whether one planting will do better than the other. So you just go out and you plant. You've heard the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That actually comes from the Bible. That comes from Ecclesiastes. But he's, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, when you sow, don't just sow in one area. Don't just sow at what you think the right time is. Come back to that bit in little that in a little bit but you do planting all the time you should be planting good seeds all the time in your life because you never know where it's going to grow and some people think they are waiting on God and they're not they're waiting on God for a job or a miracle or a spouse, or something else. And God is waiting for them to start planting seeds. You can't ask God to find you a job if you're not actually out there looking for a job. Um, but I have dealt with people who thought, oh, God's going to give me a job and all I need to do is sit at home. And it's, yeah, but you need to plant the seed. No deposit, no return, as it used to say on old drinks bottles. I, see, I also see it when it comes to the prophetic. People come and say, have you got a prophetic word for me? And I've talk with others in the prophetic movement and they say the same. Have you got a prof people come and say, have you got a prophetic word for me? And it's, well, what are you doing with the prophetic words God's already given you? If you're not doing anything with them, why should God give you another one? Last week, Bissy had a board on which we could write words of blessing and prophetic words for Lara, which she's put in the room, or, the, or that's the plan, so that Lara will be able to see them and see the words God has spoken over her life. And I didn't say this to, to Bissy last week because I wanted to include it in this week's sermon. But on my bedroom wall, at the foot of my bed, I have a list of 10 prophetic words that are either yet to be fulfilled or are in the process of being fulfilled. They are there to remind me to claim them, to fight for them in prayer and to, to do something about them. The prophetic words are the seeds and I'm doing what I can to allow them to grow and bear the fruit that God Intense. Number four, whatever I plant, I will reap. If a farmer plants a field of beans or sweet corn or wheat, that's what he's going to get. Galatians 6 7. You will reap exactly what you plant. That phrase in Genesis, the trees bearing fruit, seed according to their kind. Bible talks about this a lot. Job 4.8 Though people who plant trouble harvest it. 
Proverbs 22.8. Come on, move. Thank you. Whoever sows sin reaps weeds. In the New Living Translation, those who plant seeds of injustice will harvest disaster. Hosea 10.13, you planted wickedness and now you reap evil. Matthew 7.2, whatever measure you use to judge others will be used to measure how you are judged. But it's not just negative. The one who sows righteousness will reap a sure reward. Plant good seeds of righteousness and you'll harvest a crop of my love, says the Lord. That's Hosea. And then James 3.18. Peacemakers plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of goodness. You sow anger, that's what you're going to reap. You sow patience, that's what you're going to reap. You reap what you sow. You reap laziness or responsibility, you're not going to reap success. The only place that um, success comes before work is in the dictionary. So the Bible is full of both negative and positives. Is it? Uh, no, we'll come, come back to that in a moment. Jacob, his name actually means supplanter or a cheater. He cheated his brother and he cheated his dad. And then his father-in-law cheated him. Galatians 6 says this, the person who plants selfishness is more ignoring the needs, the needs of others and ignoring God harvests a crop of weeds. That's all he will have to show for his life. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. You're going to harvest what you plant. And this is not just true of you individually. It is true corporately. In the 1990s, Derek Prince was speaking to church leaders in the USA. He warned them that America was born in rebellion and unless the seed was dealt with, the fruit would be a nation and a church beset by witchcraft. Because rebellion, and I can't remember the actual verse, but it's Samuel talking to Saul, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And with the drag queen hours in schools and libraries, the serious rise in political violence, and the proliferation of conspiracy theories, many commentators actually say, yeah, that's what we're now reaping. And could it be that because the prophetic movements didn't deal with, and the charismatic part of the church, think back 20 so years, and all the words about what was going to happen with the millennium, that because we didn't deal with those missed words, we've now got chaos. Are we, have we reaped what we sowed? 
And if it's true for a nation, if it's true for the prophetic movement and the charismatic movement, it's going to be true for a church. So we must be careful about the seeds, not only that we sow in our own lives, in our families, but actually within our community. Number five, I'm not the only sower. Other people are planting around you. And you reap both good and bad from those who went before you. There are families with a history of abuse. A history of alcohol. A history of divorce. And that plays out through all the generations. You, but you, you can't change what's happened in the past, but you can change how it's going to control you. And you can choose, and people like Dave and Bridget, Martin, Jenny and myself can actually help you to break those chains. Because everything that has happened in the past, you are reaping both good and bad. Everything you do has consequences. And just as the people in the past has sown and you're reaping the consequences, what you do is going to have an effect on generations further down the line. Jesus said in John 4, 38, I sent you to reap where you didn't plant. Others had already done work before you and you will gather the harvest. So, are you leaving a legacy of generosity or stinginess? Are you leaving a legacy of faith or doubt? Next one is, I always reap in a different season than I sow. I'm definitely not a gardener, so why I got this, I don't know. My mum won't even let me water her house plants when she goes away because I managed, I think I've even managed to kill a buddlier. So <clears throat> that's how bad I am. Um, but plants take time to grow. You don't plant today and get, and get fruit. You don't plant, if you planted this morning, you're not going to get fruit this afternoon. There's always a delay. Same as when you plant anything in life. There isn't, there may be instant fame, but there isn't instant success. When people talk about overnight successes in the media, they don't talk about all the years of hard work that went into it. It takes time to gather wisdom. Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to plant, a time to scatter, a time to gather. A illustration from scripture, King Saul sowed rebellion by not doing what God had commanded and giving in to pressure from the men in his army. 
God, through Samuel, told him that the kingdom, the throne of Israel, had been taken from his hands. But it was decade late, decades later that that actually happened. The fruit was harvested decades after the seed was planted. In other words, it takes, there's a time, it takes time. Fruit ripens gradually. And it doesn't rap, ripen all at the same time. If you go out blackberrying this time of year, you will find some that are ripe next to some that definitely aren't and are still green. A seed you plant is not going to, you don't harvest immediately. Grapefruit takes two years. There is actually an orchid, it is very endangered. And one of the reasons it's so endangered is it takes a hundred years from it being fertilized to it blooming. Some things take time, but they're worth it. Again, looking at the prophetic movement, you will regularly hear people say that it takes time from the call to the commission. The figure that they use is about 30 years. Why? Because you need to grow strong enough to weather the spiritual storms that are going to hit you. Next, be patient. Don't give up. Because you reap in a different season, you need to be patient. As I just said, the fruit is not going to appear overnight. It's not going to appear the same. Whether it's tomatoes or potatoes or whatever, it's not going to appear that same day. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not be tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not get discouraged and give up. Next one. You always reap more than you sow. what some people call the law of multiplication. In the parable, one of his parables, the parable of the sower, some seed fell on good soil, it came up and grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, and even 100 times. Think about the pips in the apple. One apple can produce a whole tree. One pip can produce a whole tree. And again, this works for you or against you. Next one is, I can increase my harvest by planting more seed. You're not going to get a field of wheat. You're not going to get an orchard if you only plant one seed. <laughs> the more you plant, the more you're going to get back. 2 Corinthians 9. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each one should give what he decided in his heart, or actually it means covenanted, made a promise in his heart, to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, 
for God loves a cheerful giver. What this verse says is this. You get to choose how big the harvest is going to be in your life. You get to choose how, much, how God is going to bless you. It works, not just for Christians, but non-Christians. It's one of those laws that God has put into place. Proverbs 11, 24, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Think about Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol and how small the world of Ebenezer Scrooge had become. Quite literally, his world had become the office. So, and moving on to the same thing, the more seed I plant, the more God gives me. God is a generous God. He gave the most precious thing. He's looking for people who will be generous. Move in the same chapter 2 Corinthians 6 9 says this the, for God who supplies seed to the farmer and bread to eat will give you more and more seed to plant and will make it grow so that you can give more away give more and more fruit from your harvest the passage Corinthians 2 Corinthians 9 is talking about money But it's true of anything. Number 11 is, I plant by faith, not by my feelings. A lot of people aren't generous because they don't feel like it. But when a father gets up in the morning, he can't just say, I'm not going to plant the harvest because I don't feel like it. Plant the seeds because I don't feel like it. He has to get up and go and do it or he's not going to see anything. Same goes for us. You don't go by feelings, you go by faith. Some of you have probably had the feeling, I don't really want to go to church today. Not because you're ill, but just because you can't be bothered. And then you've come to church, and you've really been blessed. Because you've come, and you've been led by faith, not by feelings. If you're only ever led by feelings, you will miss the blessing of what God wants to do with you. Last one. We'll get Psalm 126. I managed to delete that. Those who plant in tears will reap with shouts of joy. It's this, I don't feel like it. It may hurt, but I'm going to do it. Number 12, the best time to sow is now. You don't wait for a better time. 
It's very easy to find excuses not to do it. Don't know if any of you have read um, Three Men in a Boat, Jerome K. Jerome. There is a character in there who is a captain, but he's always got an excuse not to go sailing. The sun's not right, the wind's not right, it's too wet, it's too dry, it's too warm, it's too cold. So he never goes sa- so he never actually goes sailing. Many pe- a lot of people are like that. Oh, I'll come to Christ tomorrow. I'll, do, I'll be, get serious about God when I retire. I'll serve God when I've got this right, when I've got this right, when I've got... Then you, you, nothing's going to happen. Ecclesiastes says this. Those who wait for perfect weather will never plant seeds. And those who look at every cloud will never reap a harvest. Perfection paralyzes potential. God will never ask you to do anything by yourself. But you must always take the first step of faith. So, to end the sermon, what is it you want to reap? Not just in your life, but in the church and in the community. Do you want to reap healings that impact people? Have you actually play, prayed for someone with someone for their healing? I'm not talking about I'll pray for you in my prayer time. James actually condemns that attitude in his epistle of yeah, I'll pray for you. He's saying, no, do something about it. If you don't actually go and pray for people, with people, for healing, you're not going to see healings. Yes, everybody you pray for may not be healed, may not be healed instantly, but you won't see anyone healed if you don't pray for people. Do you want to reap hearing God. Have you actually saved the time to read your Bible and take time to listen? When at the Sunday school I attended years ago, we had a chorus read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. That is so true. If you don't talk to God, if you don't read your Bible, you're not giving him the space to talk to you. Ishmael, the children's worker, in one of his choruses, gave the challenge, are you feasting on the word of God or are you eating crumbs? You reap what you sow. Do you want revival in the community? Do you want the Holy Spirit to break out and change Borden? So what seed has God called you to sow to see that happen? Revival is not for the church. (laughs) 
It's not for us to be able to feel good, to have this nice time of tongues and the prophetic. And to, it's for the community. You read through Acts, every time the Holy Spirit comes, it impacts the community. That's the reality. It's not for us. It's for where we live. It's for where we work. So what seed is God giving you to sow? What is he calling you to do? What prophetic words has he given you? What urge has he given you to do? And have you sowed it? Are you doing something with that seed? Because only when you do something with that seed can God grow it for a harvest. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you that you are the master gardener. But we also thank you that you have chosen to give us seeds. To sow into our life and the lives of those around us. Forgive us for where we have held on to those seeds. We're like the servant in the parable of the talents. We've only buried them and done nothing with them. Put them somewhere where nothing can grow. Help us not tomorrow, not next week, but today to sow those seeds. And to have the trust that you will make them grow. So that whether it is us or someone else, that harvest can come. And that the, so that the world will be filled with your glory as the waters cover the sea. Empower us now, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.